Happy Hacking Talking Happy Talk. Hello. Life to do. Welcome. You've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you gonna have your dream come true? Gonna give a minute or so just for people to join and come in. On a I wish you could see just to the side of the camera because there's a massive cat face just here. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Happy talk is the subject of the day and falling in small talk, smalling, smalling in love. <laughs> falling in love with small talk is the order. This is what we're looking at today. And we are on day four, people. Day four of the five day falling in love with small talk challenge. Mm. So hello, Carolyn. Welcome back. I love that you come to every day. It's so nice to have you here. And um, oh, cats just jumped down. The joys of the home office, am I right? So um, yes, let's have a little, a little recap of what we've looked at so far. So we've looked at the confidence to initiate and start new conversations with new people anywhere. We've looked at the secret of interrupting and joining existing conversations with grace. We've looked at the knack of taking bland small talk when you're stuck in the small talk boring trap, the surface bleh, into um, more interesting places using stories and um, uh, listening questions to go deeper. And now we're going to go and use questions even more. So today we're looking at the magic of asking really good quality questions to take it to take conversations into new ground, new places. So that's what we're looking at today. And tomorrow, oh, tomorrow we have how to leave it without any awkwardness. Can you imagine just getting out of a conversation you don't want to be in anymore? You're like, this is boring, or we're not a good match, or I've got to go. So that's what we're going to be touching on tomorrow, which is the last day of the five day fall in love with small talk challenge. So I hope by now your heart is beating for small talk because you cannot have a great conversation without it. It is the lifeblood of entering, having, leaving conversations, of finding resonance, of bookending so you feel safe and integrated and oriented in a conversation, of signposting what kind of conversation this is, of signposting where we're going to go. Maybe we're going to go over here. How do we feel about that? That's all small talk's gift to you for conversation. Okay, so... If you are a reluctant or even an aspiring social pro, tune into these tips, write them down, save them on your phone in your notes. I actually have clients who do that. They save them in the notes on their phone, little starter phrases that they can use. So it's dead easy for them to use them in the moment, whether it's a meeting or a networking event or a friend gathering or whatever. So um, do uh, make note of these things for yourself in whatever way works for you. So today, as I say, we're going to be looking at the magic of asking good quality questions to uncover new ground in conversations. And this can be with new people or people you regularly speak with and you're already close to. It's uh, an either or. So let's go in. First thing we're going to do is bust another myth. So another conversation myth to bust is, and people say this to me all the time, all the time, that using questions to connect is uh, rude and intrusive and they, they don't want to be rude and intrusive it's an absolute myth it's just not true how do you think any new ground was uncovered anywhere it's by asking questions now i hear you all baying in the background but what if it's too personal and you're right you're absolutely right. There are some questions that are too personal. So if you go in with like your first question is like, oh, hey, no, no, no. Tell me about your mother. It's a lot, right? It's, it's pretty rude. It's pretty intrusive. Have you got that trust yet? Do you have permission to ask about that? Um, and even if you did, it would still be a bit too soon. Um, or is it like the, so why did you choose to do that? You just leave it there hanging all awkward and personal. So yeah, there are some questions that are too personal, but hell 
there is so much you can play with that is just about moving the conversation along, ticking it over, moving it into here, here, over there. Ooh, let's go over there. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to show you today. So the, um, the, <laughs> the, there are two types of questions, right? There are open questions and closed questions. And um, closed questions, bless them, have a bad rep. It's like, don't ask too many closed questions. It's just like, really, it keeps it really uh, uh, tight and contracted. Well, actually, closed questions offer rhythm changes to conversations. They're great for lots of quick clarifying um, as to, uh, is this right? Is this next? What's happening? Shall we do this? Um, you can use them as a like a quick patter of exchange. Um, and they also mean that the conversation doesn't stay completely over on one side with the open question always going like, and imagine you're playing conversation tennis. It's like the person plays with the ball themselves for ages while they're answering your open question. And then they bat it back and you ask another open question, boom. And then they're just playing with the ball for ages. It's hardly a game, right? You're hardly in the exchange there. So, um, yeah, they, they both have their uses. Open questions uh, really are the new territory tool, okay? So you want to find a balance between the two and use them for their benefits that they offer to conversations. So um, top tip here, there's not too many to remember here in the um, the question phase of the conversation. So the main thing is stick somewhat religiously to a what or how question. So the what and how questions are the best open to question types. Um, if you're new to really exploring open questions and it's quite a kind of tentative skill for you, if you stick with what and how, you're pretty much, I mean, it's just such a safe bet. You're in a really good place. And um, what's interesting about forming questions with a what and how, when I first learned this skill, skill quite a few years ago, someone pointed it out to me and they were like, what and how all the way, all day, every day. It's like, okay. I realized that it was actually, um, I really had to catch myself as I went in with a do you, are there uh, question or would you? And I, I kind of have this sensation in my mouth that is like, how do you, did you get into that? And it was like a little hesitation as the, the, the usual question format would show up in me as an impulse. And then I'd, I'd remember my like, I'm sticking religiously to what, how. And I'd remember my little rule that I'm using to get better at asking questions. And how long have you been doing that? <laughs> it would kind of form as I'm actually speaking. So it was, um, it was a funny few months as I learned the skill and integrated the skill into my impulses in conversations. So um, don't worry if it feels a, a little bit weird as you start to do it, because it does. You're learning a new skill, right? And when uh, when you first get on roller skates, it's pretty hard to stand up. When you first use what and how, you've got to catch the words before you say your usual options. So it's just the same. It's just a skill that you're learning and catch yourself. And you can even go, is there uh, how many... <laughs> Right. So you're going to you're going to switch it around. It's totally cool to do that. No problem at all. So um, one of the other beauties of uh, one how questions of sorry, of asking questions more broadly um, is that it really shows that you are interested in the person. Only interested people ask questions. And so by by continuing to show interest in somebody, um, it just creates a really nice atmosphere. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. Welcome back. And um, yes, yeah, so the questions used well are actually a wonderful way of showing that you are interested and care about the conversation that you're in and the person who you're having it with. And so um, a caveat, of course, too many closed questions, too many yeah, no, or one word, one or two word answer questions ends up feeling like an interrogation. Are you going to eat that? How long have you been here? When are you leaving? <laughs> right? You're like, okay, cool. Um, so there is a there is a caveat to to both options. Either you end up staying too long one sided in the open questions, or you end up interrogating the other person with the closed questions. So um, use them use them together, really. Okay, so I'm going to give you some um, the the three main tips here 
The first one is stick religiously to what and how. Such a safe bet, wonderful practice. The next one is pick the potential paths that you're going to ask questions, your what and how questions about, directly onto something they have just said. Okay, I'm going to say that again. So they share something, you're going to formulate your what and how question directly around something they have just shared with you. So if you're somebody who gets nervous about asking questions, this is so safe. You're using what they have already set, already revealed that they're willing to share by riffing off what they've just given you. The other advantage to this is that it look it it um, shows that you are listening, that you're picking up on what they've just said. Whereas if you go, uh-huh, and then you go completely tangent question on something that you've in, you've inferred off what they're saying, but they haven't actually told you, um, unless you have a really strong relationship established already, that's quite a dangerous strategy because you can find that you're, you've suddenly taken them, one, into a place that they didn't really want to go, two, You've given them the feeling that you weren't listening that well. And actually, they're probably sharing. They're probably already revealing something that they would like you to ask more about um, by what they've already said. So, um, yeah, it was really important. Riff off something they have just said. If you can even use some of the words they've just used, even better. It's a real lovely mirroring. I'm listening. I'm with you. We're in this together feeling when you do that. And a f- final tip. Um You'll notice I haven't said ask why. And there's a reason. Why is that? The reason is because when you use a why question too early, it it can feel like it's too personal or the person can feel like they're being a bit judged. So a classic one would be like, Anna, why did you do that? Now, obviously, as I'm saying it with like all of the judgment in my face, but even without that, and why did you do that? Or why did you do that? <laughs> it's like it's got so it's quite it can become really loaded. And even if you're it's just coming from curiosity on your side, unless the trust and connection is really strongly established, the why question just it's a it's a layer deeper than the what and how. And you really need to feel safe if you're going to answer a why question because it's more revealing. It just is. It just it's more revealing. It goes under the surface a little bit more. So reserve your why question once you have established a strong relationship. And then it's fine. And then it's totally fine. But do watch out for the and uh, why vibes because it, d- it does add to the judgy. Um, okay, so here's some examples of what I've been talking about. So we've got uh, an open question might be, how did you hear about this event? And they'll go on and tell you something and then you formulate a what and how about something they've just shared with you about how they found out about the event or their industry or whatever. Um, So what did you do next? It's pretty, you can pretty much use that conversation, that question anytime with somebody because it's a a very generic question, but it, it reveals so much. It really opens up more information to play with. And what you're trying to do by using questions to get into new places is um, uncover more branches, more paths or places that you can go. And some of them will just be all juicy and interesting. Um, Here's a, a closed, two examples of closed questions. So when did you get here today? So although it's not a yes, no, it's pretty, it's pretty short, pretty minimal on the response that you would give to that. How did you get here today? Again, usually doesn't bring up a lot of answer or much to play with. Um, Here's a way of using a, a closed question and then moving it into an open question. So, did you enjoy it? Yes, no. What did you, what did you think of the event? Opens up a whole lot more. Or you can even go, what did you like about it? So now you've got, did you enjoy it? Yeah. What did you like about it? Now we're open again, right? Totally fine. Go closed, open. And here's a way of using closed questions for clarity. All right. So you've got, can I just check that I understand correctly? Yeah, sure. Um, 
Are you going to the next talk? Do you know much about the topic? How did you get into it? Boom, we're in, right? Or if they say no, you can be like, ah, so what brings you to the talk? And now you're going to find out, even though they don't know much about the topic, why they're drawn to it. It's interesting. Now you're in an interesting place. Um, here's one for the, the wedding attenders amongst us. Do you know the bride? And they say yes or no. Have you known them long? How did you meet? Right, so we've gone closed, closed, open. Fantastic. So there's a, uh, the pattern changes and the rhythm changes that are afforded by using close, a combination of closed and opens is uh, really lovely. You get lots of little quick back and forth and then you go open question and then blah, 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 blah. Really, really nice. So as I said, to summarise the benefits of using questions is that you show interest and care super nice really important for connection uh switching provides all the rhythm changes so you don't get stuck in interrogation mode or one-sided mode Uh, moves conversations when they get snagged or there's a bit of an awkward silence pop in a little what or how question if it's go if it's slowing down and grinding to a halt you can either use tomorrow's tips to get out of there or you can pop in a what and how to reinvigorate the conversation um, opens up new dialogue and thought paths, new places, yes, and creates an opportunity to listen and learn more about that person or that topic. If you want to find out, you've got to ask questions, right? Um, you might be learning about the person, you might be learning uh, where you where where you connect and resonate, or just of new places to go in that conversation. Great, so. Since you're following the person's lead on what they've shared by, so you really are sticking to asking about something they've just shared with you, you can't really go too wrong. So I encourage you, I, from the bottom of my heart, encourage you to go and show your curiosity and show your interest by a combination of what and how questions and little quick yes, no questions for clarifiers. And, um, just watch what it does to your conversations. I promise you it'll take you into new places and give a lovely dynamic exchange happening in your interactions. All right, peeps. So we're coming to a close. Do let me know what your main takeaway is from today. What you're going to do differently. Pop it in the comments. If you're here live, pop it in now. But otherwise, go on to the replays. Or if you're watching the replay, tell me in the comments. I love to hear how these tips land and what they give you. And um, if you've got any questions, drop them in there as well, of course. And I shall answer them for you. And um, tomorrow, we're the last day. Oh! So our last day is the art of leaving a conversation without being rude. Ooh, doesn't that sound useful? Um, There's many reasons why you might find yourself in a conversation that you don't want to be in. It's a new person. It's not a good match. It's a bit boring. Uh, You have gone on a date. Ooh, and that's really coming up in August, by the way. We're really looking at dating conversations in more detail, but for now maybe you find yourself in a date or an interaction you don't want to be in you're like how do I get out of this um you want to you know you want to save face you don't want to be super rude or for it to go really awkward um hi Lucy and um yes uh or it's just coming to it's kind of rambling on a little bit and you need to leave so you're going to find a way to end the conversation gracefully and get out of it that's what we're touching on tomorrow so tomorrow at 12 o'clock how to get out of conversations without being rude or it going super sour or awkward that's what i'm going to be sharing with you tomorrow on day five the last day of our fall in love with small talk challenge um so as we have been doing we're going to close and ride out with our ella fitzgerald happy talk song and um i'll see you soon Oh yeah, and more more open questions, Carolyn. Yes, I love that. You go and play with those what and hows, and let me know how you get on because it's such a game changer. You gotta have a dream if you don't have a dream. How you gonna have a dream come true? Oh.
thanks everybody for coming share it like it pop your comments in let's get this out there because darlings we need to fall in love with small talk that's all i'm saying and i'll see you tomorrow